Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to a reading by Ellie Pressner. I don't know if Sandra Gokup will be joining us today, um, but uh, Ellie is here. So I want to start by saying just um, Oh, uh, just just by acknowledging that this reading is uh, being hosted on the traditional and ceded territory of the uh, Anishinaabe people. Um, I am getting just a few questions in the uh, in the chat here. Uh, yeah, so the uh, the chat is set to all panelists. If you want to do all panelists and attendees, you can click on it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the Q&A. Uh, we'll probably have time to do a brief Q&A session after the reading. Um, so Ellie Presner, uh, Montrealer Ellie Presner is an author and formal, a former social worker. Her blog, uh, ellipresner.com, has drawn thousands of readers from 127 countries. Ellie has written, edited, and proofread for a wide variety of publications, but one of the highlights of her writing career is a nomination she received from a national magazine award for Taking Back the Night, which was reprinted in Essays, Patterns, and Perspectives by Oxford University Press. She still gets a charge out of the fact that her name is just above Bertrand Russell's in the table of contents. Ellie is the author of three books, Surviving Hollywood North, Crew Confessions from an Insider, a memoir of her decade in the film business, and a script coordinator, First Kiss and Other True Fiction, Stories of Angst and Discovery, and How to Be an Almost Perfect Parent, Do's and Don'ts from a Former Family Support Worker, a helpful illustrated guide to being a better mom or dad. When not feverishly working at her Mac, Ellie may be found ensconced in her recliner with her furry long-haired cat, Annie, glued to her lap. All right, Leslie, take it away. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you for that. Welcome, everybody, to my reading. Hi. Um, good to see you, although I can't really see you, but I guess you're out there. I hope you're out there. Uh, first of all, I will do the land acknowledgement, which is I acknowledge that I live, work, and play on the traditional unceded territory of the Mohawk people, one of the Iroquois Five Nations Confederacy. Thank you. So I'm going to read a little excerpt from my book, which is Surviving Hollywood North. This is the cover, which I was gifted because I won a contest. So I was very lucky. Um, I'm going to read the prologue. The book is about the decade I spent as a script coordinator on films and television, some television shows in Montreal. Uh, it was a crazy time all through the 90s, very wacky. And I felt compelled to write this memoir. I just put it all together, smacked it down, organized it, and uh, I feel good about it. So I think it's pretty entertaining, actually. I just reread it after not reading it for, I don't know, a couple of years or a year. And I found, I mean, I laughed at a couple of places, so hey. Uh, so I'm going to read the prologue, uh, which, I think it's interesting. It has to do with when I first was about to meet with Patrick McGowan, who was a, a famous actor, especially in the 60s and 70s on TV mostly. He, well, he starred in a cult show called The Prisoner. Some of you may know of it. And uh, also a show called Secret Agent, AKA Danger Man. Um, and it was a very, very interesting time that I had to work with him. He invited me to California, but all that's in the book. But this is the prologue. And then after that, I'll read the first couple of pages of the first chapter just to get you into the book. On a warm spring afternoon in May 1996, the phone rang. Well, okay, it rang a lot of times in May 1996, but this was different. It was a call from a production coordinator I'd worked with previously, Jacqueline Marlowe, yet another fabulously bilingual film crew member, so prevalent in our multicultural city, Montreal, Quebec. Her timing is excellent, I thought. Here I am, right between two seasons of the TV show Space Cases, and she's no doubt calling about a feature for me. It'll fit in perfectly, because I worked on contract, one gig after another. After our warm greetings, she says, so Ellie, maybe you've heard there's this show called Hysteria I'm working on? 
I tell her, that's great. Her timing is excellent. She says, well, actually, I'm not really calling for you to work on hysteria. Someone's already doing the script revisions. I said, oh, well, she says, well, what I'm really calling about is this. We have an actor on the show. Do you know of Patrick McGowan? Is the Pope Catholic, I think to myself. But I don't say it because Jacqueline, like most French-speaking Quebecois, is probably Catholic, and I don't want to offend her. It's also quite possible that she herself had not heard of Patrick McGowan, since the French and English cultures were often quite separate. The noted Canadian author Hugh McLennan wrote a much lauded book back in 1945 called Two Solitudes, about how insulated the lives of French and English people in Quebec usually were from one another. So in that light, perhaps she thought I had never heard of him either. In any case, my response to her question was, of course. I was a little excited, what can I tell you? Everyone, well, every female of a certain age, who had ever watched the 1960s cult TV hits, Secret Agent, AKA Danger Man, or The Prisoner, had nursed a crush on him. He had the handsome face and a voice of such authority that it rang out with a clarion force that, oops, I'm getting carried away here. Right, so now Joplin says, well, Ellie, Mr. McGowan asked me if I knew anyone who could help him out with his script. Would you be interested? His script? His script? I was all a quiver with attention. If I'd been a cat, my ears would have been pricked forward and my whiskers too. Only later did I learn that the script he was writing was for a feature film, a sequel to his classic 1960s show, The Prisoner. Yes, she said, he's writing his own script and he says he needs someone to help him to work with him because he doesn't have a computer here. Oh. She says, listen, he's right here. He can explain it to you. So can you talk to him now? My knees turned to jelly. Was I dreaming? Hello, Ellie. His voice boomed in my ear. How are you? It was as familiar as yesterday. It was unmistakably the voice of number six, the prisoner himself. Crisp, clipped, sublime diction, and loud right in my left ear. My breathing quickened. Hi, uh, Patrick? Wait, I thought. Was that presumptuous? She called him Mr. McGowan. What if he... Yes, well, Ellie, Jacqueline here tells me that you're a whiz on the computer. Is that right? The emphasis on whiz. I could barely breathe now. I was in a daze. All I remember from the rest of our short conversation was that I agreed to go to his hotel, the Ritz-Carlton, on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and to bring my laptop. I didn't have a laptop, but I damn well knew I would very soon be left renting one. Never say no, aka always say yes. I ended up renting one from a friend of my daughter's. It was called an Outbound and was a rare Macintosh clone I remember its kangaroo logo, although it was not an Australian company. I tried it out and it filled the bill. It even came with a case. Whoa, that was set to go. For the next couple of days, I forced myself to calm down, realizing I'd be useless if I went there and met him while huddled up in a nervous ball of shivering slime. I reminded myself that I had a fair bit of experience under my belt now a variety of shows with different software and people with all their quirks. Soon I was about to meet one of the quirkiest. I dress carefully as if for a job interview. In a way that's what it is, isn't it? Except that he's already under the impression that I'm super duper at script stuff. So who might argue with him? One last look in the mirror. I figure I look, I look cool, yet casual, able, yet arty. I practice breathing deeply, nice and easy, and decide to just try and treat him as, well, a colleague. We'd be in this together, wouldn't we, as equals. Sunday, 9.55 a.m. The doormat ushers me through the gilded doors of Montreal's storied hotel jewel, the Ritz-Carlton home of Elizabeth Taylor's first marriage ceremony with Richard Burton, 1964. And now, 
Andy Presner and Patrick McGowan's work on a prisoner movie script, 1996. I'm at the door to his suite. I knock with as much confidence as I can muster. The door opens. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, now I'll start part one, falling into the biz, just a couple of pages. My first gig was actually a hand-me-up from my son. During the 1990s, the Hollywood North moniker fit Montreal, no question. Well, to us Montrealers, that is. Vancouver and Toronto may have disagreed, sure, but we were very proud of the quantity and quality of our film and TV work in both English and French, no less. Our fair city hosted dozens of production companies. At any time, a slew of local and American movies and TV series kept our skilled crews busy. Top-notch talent plus our low, low dollar. U.S. filmmakers simply couldn't lose by shooting here. In 1995, every U.S. dollar could buy you $1.37 Canadian. Whenever I tell someone I toiled in the trenches of the film biz, I mean that I worked in the production offices of more than 60 shows during the 90s as a script coordinator on miniseries, theatrical film, feature films, TV series, and MOWs, Movies of the Week, also known as Disease of the Week, or made for TV movies. My complete filmography appears in the appendix. How did I get into this anyway? A whole decade as a script coordinator, despite the fact that my training and prior career had focused on social work. That was the 80s. How the heck did that happen? Well, you could say by accident. It was the summer of 1991. I was at loose ends having just finished a contract at a community center. I was unsure what to do next, but thanks must go to my son, Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy who soon had to start classes at Concordia University. Through a friend of a friend, he'd been given a part-time summer job for a flat fee of typing a script and inserting changes scrawled on some of its pages. It was a big undertaking as it was twice the ordinary script length. It was, I think it was over 300 pages. In fact, one page equals approximately one minute of screen time. It was to be a two-page, a two-part TV miniseries. In any case, Jeremy had been typing away on this monster script on our little Mac SE, but now he had to figure out how on earth he could finish the job and go to classes and do his assignments all at the same time. Ta-da, enter Mama Ellie. I'll take the script, I said, grinning from ear to ear. It brought to mind the line from Mighty Mouse, here I can save the day. So that was how my name eventually got into the film credits as script coordinator on Vendetta 2, The New Mafia. But what I thought would be a simple type of job turned out to be a lot more than that. That's the end of my reading. If anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, speak now or forever. <laughs> oh, uh. Uh, there is one question uh, from Deanna. It's, uh, I would love to know if there are any plans by the family to do the script you worked on. Um, by the family, I guess she means the McGuin family? Quite probably. Probably. Um, that poor script, Patrick had a very tough time getting the script approved by, at the time, Polygram Film Entertainment, because as I talk about this a lot in my book, they wanted, it was very a very cerebral script, the same as the TV show was, very, very cerebral, a lot of talk and a lot of, I mean, there was action, but they wanted explosions, they wanted car chases, you know, they wanted fireworks, basically, because at the time, that's what, you know, uh, James Bond and whatever, that's what they wanted for their buck. And uh, Patrick was having none of that. He felt that would not be true to the series at all, not be true to the ethos of it, the spirit of it. Um, no, so they were always at loggerheads. It really, 
kind of, he, you know, he tried to insert a few things, but no, he, he just, he drew the line. So that particular script did not get filmed. There was something, I believe it was in 2008 or nine, um, a remake uh, on TV, which I refused to watch out of loyalty to Patrick. Cause, and, and I understand it was not well received really. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I answered that, but no, I didn't. That script did not get made in the end. That seems to be it for the questions. Uh, that was a really great reading. Thank you so much for doing it. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and listening to the reading. Um, and as soon as... <laughs> Sorry? Yes, buy her book. The links are in the chat. So oh. make sure to click on it and then buy that book if you, if you liked it. Uh, thank you so much, Ellie Presner from Montreal. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of their con. Thank you. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye.